Okay, so we're uh, we're gonna set up the spine again on our um, on little alien guy here. Okay, um, so we've got our controllers where we're gonna want them. All right, we've got a spine one, two, three, and a back all controller. Right, none of them hook up just yet. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and create nulls for these controllers. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and create three nulls because we have three controllers. And that guy, who's different? This guy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the joint. Right, then select the null, constrain, parent. Right, and then delete. Select the next joint, next null, constrain, parent, delete. The next joint, and the last null, constrain, parent, and delete. Okay. Right, so each of these nulls now, right, is Mimicking the information that is on that joint. No, da, da, yep, right there. And um, now we can go ahead and we're going to take these these control spine control one, two, and three, and we're going to freeze transformations on them. And now we're going to select the um, select the controller, select the null, and hit P. Or you can um, edit parent if you like using the menus. Right, and then the next one, uh, controller, null, P, and controller, null, P. Right, and now we're going to select those controllers. As you can see, they all have information on rotations translations and stuff. So we want to get rid of those. So we're going to select those, all three of those. All right, and we're going to modify freeze transformations. So they are all zeroed out. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and have set them up so they control the actual joints. So controller one, and shift select for the joint, constraint, Parent. Remember, make sure maintain offset is not checked. It probably doesn't matter too much because they're they're sharing the same space, but you know, just as a good habit. And the second controller, and spine two, spine control two, and then the second joint, and constrain. Parent. All right. Spine control three. Spine three. Constrain, parent. All right now, just to check our work. All right, we've got. There we go. We've got that. Yeah, it does it. Yay. Complete. How to your sensei. Okay, and so now what? Remember, we want this controller to follow that controller, and that one to follow that one. So we take the null of the follower. Right, and then select the controller of who we want it to follow. So in this case, spine, th spine control three's null gets parented to spine control two. Right, and then the null spine control two gets parented to the controller for spine, or the spine control one. Right, and now if we want to go ahead and just check those. Right, we can see that if we select all of them, we can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let me just make sure they're all zeroed out again. Yeah, they're good. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and set up, um, now that we've got those working, 
We're gonna go ahead and set up our spine all control. And we need a null, right? It is snapped to the, um, the centermost joint of our spine. So um, like I said before, I prefer, it's easiest if, if you have a, an odd number of the spine joints. It just kind of makes the middle, section of a middle very easy. Um, so I'm gonna take, I basically set this up as if it's gonna be a regular controller, but it's not. So I select the joint, and then all, constrain, parent, right? And select the backhole controller, modify, freeze transformations, right? Select it, and then select the null, P for parent, and on the backhaul controller, once again, they're going to modify freeze transformations. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to create groups on each of the controllers for the spine. All right. So I'm going to select the controller, control G. Right. You can see it made a group one. And the second uh, controller, spine control two, control G. And then the last one here, Control G. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and just name these. Back A group. Back B group. And then Backstreet Boys. No, but Back C group. Uh, so I've got all those, and now I can select the back all controller, and then select each of the groups. Right, the groups, not the controllers, but the controller for the back all is selected. And um, so I'm just going to go to Window, Render, uh, the Rendering Animated Editors, Hypershade. And I'm going to go ahead and um, select the, uh, the map, the input and output connections. And I should get these, right? And I'm just going to drag them. It's easy to work with them and easy to see. Right. And where I have this little, um, see a little, zoom in, see a little arrow, a little output arrow. Right, so on the um, this one, I'm going to left click, or sorry, right click, rotate, and then left click, and select rotate. Right, right click, rotate, and on the input connection, left click, rotate, right click, rotate. Right click, rotate, left click, rotate. Okay, so I've got that, and then just check it, and it's all good. Okay, and um, Now I'm going to go ahead and just um, select the backhole controller, do a control G, and call this uh, back all group. And this is where it gets kind of weird, but um, I'm going to select the, um, the center joint, right, and then the back all group, right, so the joint will be, connect will be controlling this group. And I'm going to constrain parent. Right, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to, um, if I grab one of these controllers, I'm gonna, it's going to be able to, to track. Right, now that back all controller moves with it if I'm not, you know, if I move these individually. Same thing here. If I grab that one down there, right, it's still going to move and track with it. So, kind of keeps my, my rig all together.
And that is it.